Praise the Lord. All right, so we're starting another series this week. So our guests, thank you for coming again. Uh, we, we serve it here, hot, fresh, and beautiful. <laughs> My pastor will not talk, but you know you're in trouble. Sometimes it's good that he talks. <laughs> So my, mat, my heart is indicting a lot of matter today. And so it just looked like everything just sinking. Because at the end of the day, um, one, part of what I'm going to talk about is what we have already started here. Faith and finance. Faith and finance. So let me start from Third John. Chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. Now, please pay attention to this message. Another thing I want you to imbibe as a culture in this place is the capacity to write. Make it your lifestyle to always document. Everything you're hearing, uh, even if it's your phone, document, write. Write, yo. <laughs> if Moses didn't write these things, God told him, we will not have anything to read. All the prophets, they wrote. In fact, God will tell them to write. It's in the Bible. Write. Make it a way of life. Write. Document. And not just write. Go back to what you have written. Third John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things that you may prosper in all things and be in health. The first dimension was in all things. The second dimension is health. Then he said, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear now that my children walk in the truth. Interesting. So what scripture is saying here? That there is already prosperity in your destiny. Your physical reality may not have caught up with it. He said, beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health. And he said, just as your soul prospers. So when you gave your life to Christ, prosperity was attached to your destiny already. But the truth is that your physical reality may not have caught up with what happened in the spiritual. So he's saying here that I pray that your inner world realities will catch up with your physical realities. That many people who are together, everything looked together, everything, but they are a financial mess. They show up in church, they worship, they join unit, they serve extensively, but when it comes to finances, they are still a mess. What else do they need to do? That's what scripture is saying here, that your spiritual realities, you will not just be a person that is physically, spiritually um, rich, but physically broke. That's what I'm saying here. Very important scripture. Let me assure you that God's kingdom is governed by some set of rules. When you become a citizen of this country, now, I want you to pay attention because what I'm preaching, I have preached it before. There's nothing spectacular, there's nothing new that I'm preaching now that you have not had before. The problem most of the time is that we hear this thing, it enters one here and leaves the other, through the other. Or, like the word of God or the seed that was sown, some other things choke them up. Or, Satan comes and steal it in your heart before it even has the opportunity of doing anything in your life. It's the word the word that some guys had consistently, and they became lawyer. 
and then they show up and do examination. And then some of them graduate to become senior advocate. There is nothing spectacular that they did to them other than the word they kept hearing. The quality of the word that keep coming into their heart. That's what transformed them and turned them into professionals. It's the same thing with God's word. It's the word that will change your life. So when you became part of God's kingdom, there are a set of rules that you became part of. So this kingdom is governed by a constitution, by a rule. So we live by those rules. We understand them and apply them to our lives. One of them is that the kingdom has a culture. The kingdom of God has a culture. Psalm 106, verse 35. The Bible says, but they mingled with the Gentiles and they learned their works. They, they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their work. They, they mingled with another nation that's not part. They mingled with another constitution. And then what happened? They learned the ways of those people. I remember in Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 2, the Bible says that king of Babylon came and then took over Israel. And then they said they picked some of their smart kids and then assigned them to a special work that they want to engage in the ministry of the king into the civil service or into the public service. So they were attached to the eunuch and, you know, a small school to train those guys so that they can find work for them. One of the things they did was to change their thinking, change their name, change their names and change their language. That's culture. They indoctrinated them and changed them, nurtured them away from the word of God. All these songs we are hearing that you are listening to is programming you. We did Stomp for Children here. They were asking one of them to tell us the song that she wants to dance to. She mentioned one name. How is he? That's the, that's the artist she wants to dance to. Every song has a lyric. Has a lyric. There's something they want to convey. And some of you know how dirty those words are. They are programming people. I'm telling you. Mariani. You know what I'm saying? Don't laugh. Frown. It's a programming. <laughs> so, the Bible says that they mingled with the Gentiles and then they learned their works. That's a culture in God's kingdom. If you don't, if you are not influenced by that culture, another culture will influence you, especially if you mingle with it. I was telling my wife, I said, America has just started. Now it's on a weekly basis. Attacks and killing themselves. Now, it's not, the enemy is not from outside. It's from within. There's a culture that's evolving there now. There's a culture that's evolving consistently. The president was saying that more children, more citizens, innocent citizens have died more than men who went to war and police officers put together. Somebody would just be inspired by Satan, and then carry gun, and then kill children. It's a culture. So it looks like they are doing a relay. When you finish your own, me, I would start my own, because it's gaining some kind of attention. It's a culture. There's a wave of money ritual in Nigeria. Am I correct? If you're not careful, it's a culture. I said it when kidnapping started, that if you're not careful, it will increase. It has graduated from kidnapping now to banditry. People are heavily influenced by what they hear, what they see consistently. Corruption is a culture. Now it's become a culture in our nation. Now we rationalize it. Now we package it. Now we... we, we. Two, last week, China killed two guys. Executed two corrupt officers. Executed. For corruption. Executed. They said they collected bribe. 
That, and that was their death sentence. Till tomorrow. Corruption in China. But the funny thing is, in Nigeria, they're corrupt. You can't do it in your country, but you can do anything in Nigeria. It's a culture. There is a culture of the kingdom. Imbibe the culture. There is a political ideology in God's kingdom. That's why Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible says, And he had made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We have a king in the kingdom. That's why they call it kingdom. And all of you are priest kings. Kings don't get broke. Before the king will be broke, everybody will be broke. Am I correct? So if you're a king in God's kingdom, in your inheritance is prosperity, it's success. Don't believe me as I'm talking. See, <laughs> at least I can teach you how to live above regular without a salary for three years. That's the minimum I can teach you. And I was still giving. And I was still giving without a salary for three years. God is your source. Not that job. And not your business. Are you listening to me? God is your source. If you so depend on it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. So there's a political structure in God's kingdom. So the king of kings is our king. And all of us are king priests. Revelation 5, 10 said it. Revelation 5, I mean chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 also confirm it. He has made us kings and priests. And he said we will reign on the earth. You're supposed to reign. That's your destiny. This kingdom has an economic and financial system. God's kingdom has an economic and financial system. Have you noticed that in every country, when there is famine or economic recession, the volume of money does not deplete. It doesn't reduce. What normally happens is the money moves from the hands of some people <laughs> into the hands of some people. So the scarcity of the money uh, creates poverty for some people. How easy it is for people to be deceived. So in this kingdom, we are rich and we are prosperous. I don't care if your balance right now is zero balance. That is not you. That's your balance. That's the account. But that is not you. Is somebody listening to me? I cannot overemphasize this thing. As you think, so it becomes your reality. America is the most indebted nation in the world. Yet, they are the most prosperous nation in the world. I was watching um, a documentary. And it was a documentary, no, it was even a movie about how a young man, because of, in 80, because of the earthquake and the, and the natural disasters, you know, um, affected them. So he migrated to the U.S. He said one NGO brought them to the U.S. And then they were starving and working. So his family depended on him. Part of the problem that we have is that despite our migration, all the money that we are repatriating in foreign exchange, it is not for economic development. It's for stomach infrastructure. Instead of our families to be sending money home for development, they're sending home to pay school fees, to help somebody buy shoes, to help somebody pay rent. All those things are going to consumption. They don't produce anything. I'm not an economist. The economists are here. But the reality is, look at Nigeria's budget. See how it is spent. It's also a mindset. It's no budget. I have not seen any budget that looks developmental. You pay civil service so much money. Where is the money we are going to use to develop? It's for salaries.
We can teach the realities of God's kingdom, but let me tell you how it is connected to the realities of our nation. The prosperity of the people is tied to their land. Very, very important. The prosperity of the people. Is, see, ah, when Pharaoh, uh, when famine came to Egypt and uh, the rest of the world, did it affect Jacob and his family? Did you remember that story? Now, Pharaoh had a dream that there was going to be seven years of famine. Did it affect um, Jacob and his family? <laughs> he was so bad that Jacob had to emigrate to Egypt, and that was how they became slaves. These things are happening, and people cannot connect because we don't see the realities in God's world. The environment is important. If you allow the environment, the environment will influence you. You are part of the people that should influence the environment. Or else, there are lots of issues that will affect Christians. So we have a political structure. We have an economic and financial system. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. There's no especially new translation to this scripture. It's straightforward. If you're looking for Greek and Hebrew, there's no additional explanation. He said he was rich. And you know what I mean, what the Bible means by rich? Yet, because of you, they became poor. Okay, that's not the end. He said, so that you, through the poverty he acquired, you can become what? That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. That's why I said, everyone in the kingdom is rich. The Bible called us here and joined us with Christ. God is not poor. And if you say you are a child of God, then you should not be poor. But my focus is not on money, because that's where people attach it. It's not to money. Money, it's, it's an exchange for that grace, that power, that anointing, that presence that you carried. Is somebody listening to me? So we have a, an economic system. I will teach you the economic system. I'll teach you the financial system of the kingdom. And it has nothing to do with your balance. It has nothing to do with your job. It has nothing to do with your business. It is you first, and every other thing will align with that supernatural reality. Famine was coming to a land. God told the prophet to go to a place. And then he stood there. Who was feeding him? Raven, bird was bringing bread. Who baked the bread? Who produced the bread? Where did the bread get it from? And consistently, it will feed the man of God, and the man of God will sleep until the brook dried up. It was the brook that dried up, the one that is natural. The bread will still have continued to supply. And then God said, next thing, Go to Zarephath. He said, I have prepared a widow. And all of us know that the widow was broke. But yet, that's the person God has produced, prepared for the man of God. Come, come higher. Let's live at a higher dimension. A raven is a stingy bird. They said he doesn't feed his own children. Yet it was the most stingy bird that God used to feed the prophet. A conclusion. We don't believe scriptures. These things look like stories. <laughs> we don't believe the scriptures. I was telling one of our brothers during, during the week, and I said to him, I said, we that we live under the dispensation of grace, I said, we are so very responsible. There was no grace in their time. All these stories that we read about David was a man who was fortunate in his work with God. 
There was no, <laughs> there was no grace during their era. There was no pastor to teach them. There was no Sunday school teacher to teach them. See, there was no AC. There was no electricity. There was no car. King David didn't have AC in the palace. He was Atukba. He was, can't, he was, am I correct? There was no electricity in their time. Yet they leave. Maybe that's the reason why we're not responsible. Have you noticed? There's no natural disaster in Nigeria. There's no nothing. That's why our head is not correct. If there was natural disaster, earthquake here, one can call cold, extreme cold, we would have, maybe we would have learned because men learn in adversity. So the Bible says that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor. Just imagine you are rich. You're rich and your daughter or your son is suffering. How will you feel? Especially when you know that everything is available. The only reason that will make that child live in poverty or penury is because that child has been disobedient to you. Am I correct? There are parents who are rich who refuse to give inheritance to some very stubborn child. Am I correct? Maybe that's what God is doing. Stubborn children who will not listen to his word. And then we find it difficult to align with the prosperity God has provided. Why am I emphasizing this thing? I want to gem one more. I want to collect profit or free. It's not because I'm broke. Because that is part of the reason why you become prosperous. God did not bless the woman because of the woman. Remember, she has nothing. The reason why she was going to be blessed was because of the man of God. God decided he was going to bless the woman. That was why he sent the prophet into her life. And then the woman said, I don't have anything. He said, don't worry. As the Lord lives, that oil will not dry. And guess what? The Bible said, till the famine was over, the woman was daily supplied. What am I saying? Are you listening to this thing? I'm not teaching you what I don't practice. That's how I've lived my life. If you cannot live it, you are not a son. You are not a daughter. You are a rebellious child. Live according to the word. Find it in the word. You're not supposed to be broke. You can be broke temporarily. We can manage it. Because you are trying to change, you are shedding weight, you are shedding skin. But the time for your emergence is around the corner. Emerge. Somebody listening to me. My wife spoke to an event planner yesterday. And the person said that he has at least two events every weekend. In Nigeria that everybody's broke. I said, and it's a small player. I said, there are people who have five events every weekend. There's no money, there's no money. See construction everywhere. Are you blind? Can't you see? There's no money, there's no money. People, people are buying clothes, people are buying things. And then you are also helping them to confess. There's no money. Dollar is 600 plus. Yes, yeah, some people are flying anyhow every day. Sorry, something's wrong, something's wrong. It's, are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says when they say there is a casting down, you, you, you will say, no, that's not my testimony. I still sent money to a pastor yesterday night. I didn't even ask question. But that's the reality. Because he has yet to see it in God's word. A pastor who doesn't give cannot be blessed. Forget it. Let him preach the Bible till tomorrow. It's a simple law. Simple law. I'm not looking for 50,000 church. I'm looking for Gideon's army. From 32,000, God reduced it to 300. And 300 was enough for God to do, to use for whatever I wanted to do. And you're not too small. You're not too small. At least we know a, governor, a president in Nigeria who became governor at 29. Was it 29 or 22 or 21? A president, governor, get, go on. Became president at what age? was in his early 20s or so. 
And because you are 35 now, you are making it look as if something is wrong with you. <laughs> Was it Peter Atedo? Peter Sad Atedo. He said in his time, they were able to start a bank when he was 30-something. He said, now it's difficult. And because naturally, the people will make it more difficult. The babas will make it difficult. So the youth have moved to media. And that's where everybody's not doing content. You're not doing content <laughs> and singing. And then doing the real value creation. We have left the space for them. So God's kingdom has an economic and a financial system. I will teach you more about that economic and financial system. If you start the journey now, something can happen with your life. I was telling a young man. He's been looking for a job for five years now. And then I said, only two ways are designed for you to become anything. You either start a business, entrepreneurship, or you become a professional. Two ways, that's the only thing, anywhere, anywhere in the world. It's either you are a professional or you start something. A professional, he's not just the medical doctor and the lawyer. If it is plumbing, sit down with plumbing. All of us will need your service. A doctor who does not multiply or duplicate his business or his resources will be limited. That's why they float hospitals. But I keep saying that a doctor should not necessarily start hospital. A businessman should start hospital. Doctors should come and offer their service. Because he's not trained to run a business. He's trained to be a doctor, run the human body. That a businessman can provide the structure and the system where a doctor can function. Imagine what it looks like. Pastor Femi runs a business. He runs a hospital. And then 20 of us are medical doctors. And then we align with him. He will arrange all my patients. So all I get is the... No stress for me to think about how the hospital runs. It is his headache. My own is my patient. So a doctor is worried about um, the patients running about it. So that's why... Is somebody getting it? That's how they are doing in developed countries. Universities should not be run by professors. Administrators should run universities. He's a professor of chemistry. He's not a professor of university campus. Yes. He's a professor of chemistry. That's why an average professor is not economically viable in this country. I was listening to a professor on, C on CNN yesterday, and they were talking about, they were talking about sports. When the man was telling the things that he had done in current day sports, I was wondering all oh, the physical education professor in Nigeria. Up till now, we have a generation of young people who are not doing anything. Meanwhile, they are grace and they are gifting, they are lifting this in sports. No competition again. Principal Cup died, everything died. And then they are doing small, small entire sports only in private schools. Private schools now is also interested in extracurricular for their children. Now it's no more just about ac academics. I'm telling you of the realities. There's a generation of young people who are gifted. They are supposed to be the, the, the um, Uzen boat of their generation. They are there. They are there on our streets. But nobody will give them the opportunity. They will only run, they will run, the survivor run. Who is going to give them the opportunity? And then I'm telling you to be rich. You are telling me it's not important. Who is going to provide those opportunities? We met a woman online, and I asked Richard to help us get the details. She, she just fights for people who are wrongly convicted, or people who are just incarcerated for no reason. How she raised the money, I don't know. That's a ministry. That's the reason to be a lawyer. People are just incarcerated. So I have this left cell before. They lock me up in cell. And then in the middle of the night, they are bringing people. They are bringing people to the police station. 2 a.m., 1.30 a.m. They said they are wandering. 
Is it wrong to walk in the middle of the night? Is it because Nigeria does not have security? In developed countries, people are walking 2 a.m. and they are going home at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m. I was in my sister's house in London several years ago, and I walked from our house down 2 a.m. A girl was coming from the train station. When we be here in Nigeria. 2 a.m. She was walking from the train station to her house. Our economy shut down just eight hours, and we think we can catch up with the rest of the world. That's not in 24 hours. The president is sleeping and doing faji. When the rest of the world president, we have not even, we are not even half, we are not even on the, on, on the radar at all. Part of you migrating outside the country. You don't know how many hours you do job there now. I'm sure you are hearing me. God bless you. You know how many hours you do? There's no other place that you're going to hear this. It's from the household of faith. God is your source. God is your source. I appreciate your efforts. You're doing well. But that's just the beginning. You're on the periphery. And you have stayed too long on that mountain. It's time for you to march forward. Somebody listening to me. The Bible says there's nothing that you have in this kingdom that you have not received. If it is by receivement, in quote, then enough of your struggle. Enough of your struggle. I don't have the time. I will show you something from next week. Your life will change by force, by fire. Then finally, we have a leadership structure in God's kingdom. As a leadership structure in God's kingdom. And all of us are leaders in training. We are all leaders in training. The Bible says, um, Matthew um, chapter 5, the Bible says that you are the light of the world. You are the touch light that shines into the dark places. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Who was Jesus making this reference to? It's to Christians. It's some children. He was talking to disciples. And we know when he talks to disciples, he's talking to us. Because I remember when he prayed, he said, not to this one's alone, but every other one who will believe along with them as a result of their testimony. He said, you are the light of the world. That's a relative structure that we have. He said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Cannot be hidden. Then he said, now, give your light and give light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men, that they may do what? May see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So you, you are not just the light. He said you should do what? He didn't say shine your eyes. Shine your light. Not shine your eyes. That's the culture. Shine your light. Let your light so shine before all men that they may see your good works. And what would they do? They will glorify your father who is in heaven. So, if we have an economic system, an economic structure, and we said that there's already a provision for you financially in that kingdom, then it means that you cannot afford to be broke, number one. You cannot afford to be broke. If you're broke, it's supposed to be temporarily. 2017, 2018, I lost all my life savings. Some of you have heard this story before. Um, this is not the 17, 17 million Iraq BC. Mm. 17 million Iraq BC was from 2000 and um, 
I carried it into 2007. So it started 2004, 2005. The money I hold the bank started 2000, I think it was 2006. No, 2007, 2005 to 2000, because I left the business. I shut down the business in 2007. And it took me almost three years to get over it. This one that I'm talking about is 2017, 2018. I lost all my savings. I had to liquidate all my investments. I had a few, a few millions with First Bank then. And I liquidated it to pay off people that I owe. Not that I owe them, but they became part of the investment because I invited them. Can you imagine? I'm not the investor. I'm not the principal sponsor of the investment. I only introduced them. And because I introduced them, I liquidated my, all my savings. I lost money, all my money in it, yet all the savings that I had, I liquidated because I invited them. That's how a Christian should believe. I went to First Bank and liquidated. My wife was wondering what's wrong with me. That all of you are in this. I said yes, but I introduced them. So what I did was, I'm not able to pay them 100%. I said, see, this is fixed and firm. I'll give you 75%. I'll give you 80%. At least, I gave them up to that. And I said, fixed and firm. Just in case you don't understand what it means. This is the last one. You'll not collect money from me again. I don't know you after this one. And they are aware, because I told them. See, I have lost money before. Stop frowning your eyes because you lost small money. Small, compared to your destiny. Let me tell you, I lost billions. I'm not sure you had it. He lost all the billions in dollars. And then he bounced back. He was in him. The money was in him. It was just a matter of time. All he needed to do was to vomit it again. He lost money. And then everywhere is cranky. Everywhere is, even the Holy Spirit inside of you is comfort, it's not comfortable. Because you lost money or because you're broke. How many times the Bible says righteous may fall? You only fall once. You have not even fallen seven times. <laughs> ah, calm down. The environment is programming you. Something is wrong. Even the Naira that you are running after has no, he, he doesn't have mates internationally. They don't know him. He's not on the radar. African countries here. They are senior, the senior your naira like one million miles. And then we forget that the value of our currency is dependent on the value we create. You have a country who is always importing, and then you are saying their naira is going to. We are coming to 1,000 naira against one dollar if we don't change this wicked attitude. Somebody say, let's even drop naira and adopt dollar. Say, Maybe that's the wisdom. So we just lose our national identity. We could adopt dollar as a national currency. I hope dollar will now not fall under our hands. A country filled with brilliant people. Brilliant. You know, children are winning awards all over the world. The parents are messing up. The children, the, the children are doing well. The parents are not doing well. You will do well. There's time for talk, but there's no time for... <laughs> That's a reality. Stop stressing because of money. You decide what role money will play in your life. Money is your servant. Don't ever worship it. How many people are worshiping mammon now? Jesus Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said, I will show, show you everything. He said, just worship me. Only God knows how many people have been taken to that mountain. And then worshiping, worshiping money and worshiping money, 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 money. It's the reason why everything is messy. Calm down. I said, way to prosper in the word of God and I will show you. And that's what I've applied to my life. At least you have not hold 20 million naira. You have not hold 5 million naira. Maybe there's someone who up to 5 million naira. There's a way around it. You can come out of it. You can come out of it. If somebody lost billions and bounced back, 
How much more you that is a child of God? Stop it. Stop it. So there is a way to prosper in God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is not the church. The church is part of the kingdom. And you are relevant. You are important in that kingdom. There are some things God will not do because you are not available. He will do it through another means, but to do it in your own unique way, the way he wants um, Uche to do it. Nobody else can do it. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's copyrighted to your destiny, to your name. When the Bible says that the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and, the, sons and daughters of God, the, the, the frustration for me is that we have a lot of Christian Nigeria. It, it has no impact. Then people who don't know God, you will now be talking anyhow to us that know God. So if you are so focused, I had a friend who has massive businesses. And then right before my eyes, I was watching the business go down. And part of his philosophy, when I asked him questions, he said, I'm okay like this. I said, something's wrong with you. You're just okay like what? You think the money's for you? You know many destinies we could help if this thing was working? If your business can employ 1,000 people, 2,000 people, you don't know how important that is? You have a whole nation, a whole generation of people who are doing Okada. And we think they're adding value. That's that's their value. Even Huba and Taxify is not the destiny of a, a child of God. Is somebody listening to me? Huba and Taxify is not your destiny. It's a temporary measure. It's not a permanent measure. Except you have 10 of them that you give to people. It is not sustainable. Your finances must change. It must change. That's how. Coming back heads as we pray. What do you want to believe? What do you want to believe? What do you want to believe? They locked me up in cell twice. I said, that is not my destiny. Why? I'm going somewhere to happen. I'm on my way to manifestation. Don't count where you are currently. That's not your place. Destinies are waiting for you. They're encouraging you not to give up. Because you don't have a sense of destiny. You're going to have a sense of purpose. Many destinies are tied to yours. Talk to God this morning. Talk to God this morning. Talk to God this morning. Don't be like the fig tree. Showing up in church and taking all the grace. And then Jesus came only to find, just to find one fruit on it. He said, hey, you can't find anything in me. And Jesus said, hey, you dry up. I'm not fruitful. So you can't take anything. Talk to God. God is waiting to channel resources in your direction. So that you don't even think about money again. Just thinking about money, you're not even having time to think about the kingdom. Start thinking for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Talk to God this morning. Father, I'm available. Open my eyes. Open my eyes, Lord Jesus. Let me see wonders from your law. Wonders from your law. In the name of Jesus. I am rich because you are rich. The Bible says I am a here, joint heir with Christ. Therefore, my inheritance is guaranteed in you. I cannot be poor. I cannot be broke. Despite my economic realities currently, I choose to believe your word. I choose to align with the word of God. 
Thank you, faithful and marvelous God. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I thank you for your word that you sent forth today. Therefore, Lord, today I declare that the veil is removed. Over the mind of your people in the name of Jesus. Everything that has kept you small. The pressure, the bill, the frustration. I declare today, peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord opens your eyes. The Lord takes you from this current experience. The Lord breaks the hold. The Lord removes the barrier. And launch you on the path to the fulfillment of your destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that you cannot be small. You are not permitted to be small. The Bible says, him that is joined to the living, that is up. Because you are part of God's kingdom. Because you are a child of the living God. I declare a season of flourishing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare a season of finance, financial breakthrough in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare a season of ever supernatural supplies in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will show you the path of life. The Lord will lead you in the path for the fulfillment of your destiny. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be the head. You will not be the tail. You will lend to many. You will not be a borrower. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you, faithful and marvelous Father. I want to pray for someone in this service. You have not started a relationship with Jesus, so you are not even sure where your destiny lies. You want to start a relationship with Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. I want to give our brothers and my sister an opportunity to make that decision for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want to make that decision, can you put one hand in your chest and leave the other hand? It's a simple process. The Bible says that with the heart we believe unto salvation. Then he said with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, we believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto, righteous, unto salvation. You, you want to make a decision for Jesus. Um, can you put one hand in your chest and leave the other hand? All you need to do is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for you and that he was raised on the third day and that he is in heaven now interceding on your behalf. You will only need to accept him as your Lord and Savior and then you are instantly translated into God's kingdom. You become a brand new person. You want to make that decision whether in this auditorium or you are joining us online. You want to start a relationship with Jesus, please put one hand on your chest and lift the other hand wherever you are. If you're making that decision, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me and I believe that you were raised on the third day. And I believe that you are seated at the right hand of majesty, interceding for me. I renounce Satan and his works and I see you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and I'll live the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, for your sons and daughters who made this decision, we receive them in the beloved. And we declare today that your power rests upon them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. That your right hand will sustain them. This one will work in your knowledge. In the name of Jesus. They are instantly translated into the kingdom of light now. And I declare that the light of the gospel of Christ flood their hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every limitation is broken over their lives. They are free to fulfill their destinies in the marvelous name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, I'll just give you a card. Please um, fill the card and leave it on your seat. Or you write us a mail if you're joining us online. We want to send you materials that will help you in your new fan faith. We're excited that you made that decision. And we pray that God will bless you richly. And your own testimony is around the corner in Jesus' name. I said, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.